Howdy y'all, let's talk about grand hidden architecture, shady characters, redemption, the true nature of spires, and the possibility of inherited buildings. We want to try to keep this as brief as possible, but when I came across this story and the architecture, I felt it absolutely necessary and it fit the bill. In conducting my old world research, I found myself feeling more and more like a detective discovering the old lost buildings with deeply questionable backstories has become nearly an everyday event. Most of the time, it feels like these old world superstructures seem to find their way to me. In researching the tallest buildings of England, which are no longer standing today, I came across a specific building which left me as confused as I was intrigued. It's not on any lists of the tallest buildings in England, and even when I searched the internet for the history of the tallest structures in England by century, these lists all seem to begin in the 1860s or later. The British architectural site which we are going to look at today is from the 1700s, and it's not a royal palace, a government building, or a structure built to house a king or a queen. Much to the contrary, we have what is said to be a private residence constructed by a very shady individual to say the least but as with all good stories i will start at the beginning today we will be focusing on font hill in welshire england more specifically we will be looking at the 1755 font hill mansion and the 1796 font hill abbey aka beckford's folly as the name suggests, the Beckford family owned the land of Font Hill. An original house stood on the land, but around 1755, that house burned down by a fire. What followed was the construction of a really amazing old world style home, which I could only find two known images of. That building is absolutely beautiful. It has many shades of Romanesque architecture, pillars, columns, domes, and the picturesque symmetry. This was known as the Font Hill House, Font Hill Mansion, or Font Hill Splendids. The mansion, which to me appears exactly like government buildings, which were also founded around this exact same time period, the mid to late 1700s, was built without an architect, or the current narrative says that the alderman, William Beckford, with the help of local Welshire residents, miraculously designed and constructed this massive old world home, essentially all by himself. If you're familiar with old Roman monuments to the gods, this home could fit right in with the smaller ancient temples. The design, attention to detail, and overall symmetry lead me to believe that this building was likely built previously or using architects which were purposefully left out of the architectural notes. Diving further into the questionable nature of the current narrative, we are told that architects of the time, upon seeing Font Hill Mansion for the first time, believed the mansion to be out of date or old world, and using styles which were no longer in fashion. I found this tidbit of information provided to be absolutely revealing. The fact that the current narrative includes architects from the 1700s discussing how old world Font Hill is for that time period certainly seems to indicate that Font Hill as a whole may predate the age which we are given. Looking closer into this narrative and getting to the meat and potatoes of this video, Alderman Beckford passes away in 1770. At the time, the land of Font Hill and the mansion go to the alderman's son, William Thomas Beckford. William Thomas also received one million pounds, equivalent to roughly 92 million pounds today, which led to William Thomas gaining the moniker, the richest commoner in England. As the current narrative goes, William Thomas, who was only 10 when he inherited Font Hill, then travels the world for his education. He eventually befriends William Courtenay, son of the Viscount Courtenay. This is where the story becomes entrenched in drama. 
William Thomas Beckford is 18. William Courtney is 11. Yet William Thomas apparently throws a massive party for the boy at Font Hill that lasts for over three days. At first, nothing is made of this. The 18-year-old William Thomas continues to travel and writes his most famous work, the novel Vathek, in 1782. However, by 1784, William Thomas is accused of having a romantic relationship with the young William Courtenay in years past. This is absolutely frowned upon at the time, and William Thomas is almost immediately ostracized from society. He abandons his home at Font Hill and exiles himself from England, moving to Switzerland with his young wife. Long story short, after nearly a decade in Switzerland, his wife tragically dies during childbirth which causes William Thomas much pain and to again reflect on his life's decisions. He decides to move back to Font Hill, his ancestral home, and create a massive tribute to God and his faith. This is where we have the beginning of Font Hill Abbey. William Thomas's father, Alderman Beckford, was known for creating lavish architectural achievements, including damming off the river closest to Font Hill to create his own personal lake. Following in his father's footsteps and hoping to redeem himself through his faith, William Thomas Beckford had designs on building the tallest home in all of England in the design of a Roman Catholic cathedral. But the first thing the reclusive William Thomas did when he returned home was build a six mile long masonry wall surrounding the entirety of the property of Font Hill. I think it goes without saying, but as you can probably see, we are starting to develop the interesting aspects of this narrative. If we take the structures without the narrative, we can see a massive fortified home, much like an old Roman temple, built on a hill surrounded by a brick and masonry defensive wall stretching for six miles. Following that, there's an absolutely massive Roman Catholic style cathedral tower with little to no explanation on how exactly it was built. I thought this was really important to share with you. Do you notice how the more dramatic and intricate the details in the narrative become, the more it seems to dilute the awe-inspiring construction of these buildings? So here is the Font Hill Abbey, the cathedral like home built by William Thomas following his return to Font Hill, which became known as Beckford's Folly. It was absolutely massive. We have so many holes in the narrative about its construction, and with not a lot of the actual construction information given, the holes become even more apparent. First, we are told that the tower stood over 300 feet tall. For the year of 1800, I had a very hard time discovering any sort of lists of the tallest structures in England at that time, specifically. We have lists of the tallest structures in the world, in general, but Font Hill is never mentioned on any of these. We also have later lists of the tallest structures that existed in England, all of which seem to begin with structures in the 1860s, with no mention of Font Hill. So again, we are told we have an over 300 foot tall tower built in the Roman cathedral style, financed privately by a citizen, having nothing to do with the royal family or government, and yet the tower itself is really unknown, and it only has a very few artistic depictions, but it does resemble the classic old world antiquitech of ancient cathedrals. At 300 feet, this tower would also most certainly be one of the tallest structures in England at the time, especially when you note that unlike many bell towers, the Font Hill Tower was habitable. It had rooms nearly to the top of the tower, at least to the top where the spire began. Interestingly, one part of the narrative tells us that the tower and most of the cathedral were built using wood. However, in the artistic depictions I was able to find, it certainly appears that this tower is completely made out of old world brick and stone. The current narrative tells us that the tower had three builds. The first wood one collapsed, the second was also built out of wood and it collapsed, 
and the third tower is said to have been built out of stone. However, that also collapsed. Now, further down, in this very same narrative, a different source is noted as saying that the third tower was actually still built out of wood, but this time it was wood that was covered in concrete. And that is the explanation that we're given for why this tower appeared to be stone. So are you starting to see some of the nonsense in the explanation that we're given for this tower's construction? Do you find it at all questionable? We are told the tower was built using the stones from the Font Hill Mansion. Yet, in the same narrative earlier, we were told that it was built using wood. So, we are led to believe one of the richest men in England apparently ran out of money and materials and had the Font Hill house, which he grew up in and his father built, torn down brick by brick to be reused in Font Hill Abbey. But wait, there's more. If the Font Hill Abbey actually was built with wood, then why would William Thomas Beckford need to tear down the Font Hill mansion? Well, it's said that William Thomas, upon his initial return to Font Hill, following his wife's passing, was asked why he wanted to tear down the Font Hill mansion and construct Font Hill Abbey. His explanation at the time was, the Font Hill mansion was simply too small and too cramped to live in. Now, if you read the entire narrative, which I will link below, it's filled with extreme tongue-in-cheek examples like this that are basically mocking us if we believe them. Things like the fact that William Thomas lived alone, but he had hundreds of servants and would have every meal cooked for 12 people, even though he was the only one who would eat it and he would throw out all the extra food afterwards. There's other facts in here, like the Font Hill Mansion was too cramped that's the reason William Thomas said that he wanted to tear it down to build his abbey. Yet, throughout the 30 years that he lived in the abbey, he was only visited by guests one time. One time in 30 years. Yet, size is the reason that the narrative says William Thomas could not live alone in the original Font Hill mansion. That's the reason the mansion was torn down and the abbey was built. It's just really questionable to me. We then have facts given like William Thomas Beckford commandeered every horse and wagon in Wiltshire to have the Font Hill Abbey built, with no explanation of what exactly that means. The Abbey itself took multiple years and multiple rebuilds to be complete, so to say that he commandeered wagons without details is frankly a bit crazy. The narrative just continues onward in that fashion to the inevitable conclusion that is the Font Hill Abbey's destruction and the lands of Font Hill in general switching hands and eventually being torn down. This area was reset in the mid 1800s. After that time period, we have the new history books, so to speak, which document all of the actual tallest and largest buildings and they never make mention of Font Hill. But for one singular piece of time, at the top of possibly the tallest tower in England, we can picture the disgruntled William Thomas Beckford sitting alone, nearly 300 feet in the air, contemplating all these decisions he had made I believe that would be a perfect, poetically just ending in a rather dramatized portion of English history, to say the least. Now, I had never heard about Font Hill before, so is the current narrative being exaggerated to cloud the time and the founding of these buildings? Could these buildings actually have been pre-existing 
when the Beckford family took them over? Did they really exist as they are depicted in these artworks that we looked at today? Were they really as large and comprehensive as we see? Was it truly possible that William Thomas Beckford, with all of his written issues, was able to basically buy the labor of the entire city of Wiltshire and repeatedly construct, rebuild, and tamper with this tallest tower or one of the tallest towers in England at the time? Does that seem possible? I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments down below. I just wanted to share that information with you because it really, it jumped off the page when I was reading about it. And I find the whole traumatic, crazy story behind this construction and what happened to this man to be absolutely fascinating. So let me know what you think down below.